Hey, good morning, Kingwood Church and Kingwood Church Online. It's good to see you all this morning. You glad to be here? I'm glad that you're here. Glad that you're here today. Hey, uh, if, you're a, if you're a guest today and you don't understand what all of that was about, um, the, the easiest way I can say it is, we believe that Jesus is the answer. That's really the bottom line. And so uh, that's, that's what we're doing here today. And we're glad that you're, you're here and that you joined us. Um, and I just want to ask everybody to do something. Take your phone out. If you're online, you can do this too. And just scan the QR code in front of you. Uh, if you're online, it's on the screen. And what you'll, uh, the QR code will take you to a link that will show you the top three things happening at Kingwood Church. And one of them is this. If you're looking for a, a really good way to connect with us and to stay current with what's going on here at Kingwood, uh, we have three Facebook community groups, our Kingwood Church community group, our youth community group, and our kids community group. And you can join all three of those and stay current with what's going on uh, here, here at Kingwood and all the latest information is uh, available there. So we'd love for you to connect with us that way. And uh, also tonight we have a soak, uh, the third Sunday night of every month. We have 5.30, we have a soak service where we come and worship and pray. Tonight we'll be sharing communion. So uh, I'd love for you to be here tonight. And then I just want to say one last thing. We're uh, on a series called Anxious for Nothing. We started last week. And for those of you who were, who were here or caught up online, um, I want to ask you a, a big favor. If this series is ministering to you, if you're here in person, you can get a invite card in the foyer. They're just uh, almost as you make your way out the door in the foyer, there's a little cubby there and there's a bunch of cards. It has a QR code on it. And what it'll do is it'll take someone, if you give this to someone, say, I'd love for you to come to church with me Sunday, it'll give them a link to find out more about the series and, uh, and what we're doing right now. You can also do that online, and um, all of our services are, are recorded. You can find them on YouTube and our website. And if this uh, service, if this series is helping you and blessing you, just want to encourage you to share it, because our vision is to be a movement of hope to Shelby County, and uh, we want to do that through series like these. So let me just give you a review if you weren't here last week. Last week we talked about um, some kind of macro drivers, systemic and cultural drivers of anxiety, and then we talked about how anxiety can be personal and the things that you and I oftentimes do that make anxiety worse. Um, and then we talked about how in that time the Lord is near. Ephesians 4 says the Lord is near. And we looked at the story of Elijah, how the Holy Spirit uh, whispers to us, invites us to come near him uh, or, or, to, or to acknowledge that he's already close so that he might speak to us and minister to us in those times. So today what we're going to talk about is um, praying through pain. So I just want to go ahead and, and uh, get, get this out here for those of you who, who, don't, who don't know me, I've never met you, or maybe this is your first time at Kingwood. So I got a haircut this week. And, and there's a story. Um, uh, life is a little overwhelming for me right now, and I, I pro uh, procrastinated getting a haircut appointment. And so, but I got to, you know, the hair's too long. I got to do something. And so I just dove in this place that had an opening and got a haircut. And I just want to say it like this this is a sweet lady to cut my hair, but she and I have a very different opinion on what a good haircut is. <laughs> Can I say it like that? And, and uh, you know, I, 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 like Mad Max and the Thunderdome is not what I was going for, <laughs> or, or free push-up pop. It, listen, I just want you to know, none, none of this was on purpose, and do I think it looks good? No, I don't think it looks good. And did you choose that? No, I didn't choose this, okay? I just want to get that out there. And so, um, you know, I just, I, it, it's a stressful time, and I thought, man, I don't have time for this right now. So I go home and my hair dries and I go, oh, this is so much worse than I thought. <laughs> and so the next day I got up. Now, th this is going to sound silly, but, but I, I'll, I'll risk it uh, because I think it really matters for what we're talking about today. So I got up the next morning and I just began to pray. And I, not that, you know, God's going to put my hair back on. I don't think that's, <laughs> he's not going to grow, you know, hair faster. But I just got up and I started, and I said, Lord, look, I... My mind starts, can I say it? My anxiety starts to build. 
And I'm like, Lord, I got to go to church Sunday. <laughs> and I got to preach. And it's going to be online. And that's going to be there forever. And I'm going to be a meme. You know, one of my greatest fears, I don't want to be a meme. I said, I'm going to be a meme. And so I just begin to pray and say, you know, Lord, what, what do I do? I'm, I'm stuck. Like, I can't make Sunday further away. I, there's nothing I can do. And I just begin to pray about that and give it to the Lord. And that sounds silly, but I just begin to do that and just kind of calm down. And then I went and found another really sweet lady, not at that place, and said, what can you do for me? Like, this is where we are. What can you do? And she goes, mm. And, 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 I, knew, and I knew when I heard that, you know, this is the thing. And, and she, said, she said, I can do this, and, and that's about all I can do. And I said, well, do that. And so she did that, and this is where we are. So that, that's, that's the haircut story. You just go ahead and go get all that out there. But, but I do want you to know this. God's present in every part of your life. And so Ephesians 4, 6, we're going to look at it today, says, Do not be anxious about anything, bad haircuts <laughs> included, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You know what I've learned? Some of the biggest battles that people fight, we don't even see. Like they look good on the outside, they look confident, they look like everything's going fine, but inside they might f be feeling very insecure or weak or overwhelmed or stressed or feeling like I'm just hanging on with my fingernails today. And I just don't know, you know, what's going to happen. But on the outside, you know, they look like everything's going fine. And we, we're pretty good at kind of putting on our happy face. You know, we do it at church. We kind of put on our happy face. We do it on social media. No, no. We took 300 pictures. One of them's good. Put that one up there. You know, we're not, we don't want them to see the other part. And we're pretty good at putting on the happy face and looking how we think we're supposed to look. And we're pretty good at saying the right things. Hashtag blessed, you know. Everybody, everything's fine here. We're all right. But inside, sometimes, we're just struggling and battling with anxiety, and we have this internal heaviness that we carry around that's invisible that nobody can see because we look or sound good, but inside, we're not good. And, and I find that's what some of the greatest battles are. So what do we do? Well, Paul the Apostle, when he wrote the verse that we just read, he was in jail, and he had been put in jail because he was a preacher of the gospel. He, he talked about Jesus. He shared about Jesus. He taught people about Jesus. And the, the current people didn't like that, so they put him in jail. And they were trying to decide what to do with him. And so he was under trial. And he didn't know what the outcome of that trial was going to be. He didn't know if he was going to be executed, which he could have been. He didn't know if he would die of old age in jail. And he didn't know if he'd ever be released. And so in the middle of all of that, this is the verse that he wrote, and I've got to imagine that he experienced some amount of anxiety and that kind of pressure. Now, what is anxiety? Well, that's a very simple question with a complicated answer, uh, and there really are no simple answers because um, sometimes it's physiological, sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's uh, situational, Sometimes it's very individualized, but it's, it's always spiritual. What I mean by that is, is there's a spiritual component to anxiety that's always present and always there. And so I believe that we should take a holistic approach to anxiety. So I just want you to know that there, I think there are appropriate times to seek out a counselor. I think there are appropriate times to seek out a doctor. I think there are appropriate times to seek out um, even, even a healthy community where that can help just absorb some of the anxiety in your life or a trusted friend. I don't think it, it, all, it has to all be one thing, but uh, I want you to know I'm not a doctor, and uh, I can't prescribe you medicine, and look, you don't want me to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody gets a haircut like this, you don't want them giving you medicine. You know what I'm saying? So 
I don't have any medicine to give you, but I do have some spiritual medicine. Because that's what I do. I'm a pastor. So I want to talk to you about the spiritual part of this that I believe is always present. Now, um, have you ever seen a picture? I would put, show you this picture. Have you ever seen this on your car dash? Anybody recognize this? Isn't this awful? I, I, if I'm honest, I don't dislike, I hate the check engine light. And let me tell you why I hate the check engine light. Because when the check engine light comes on, you have no idea what it means. You're going down the road, it pops on, uh-oh, and you're like, what, what does that mean? How long do I have left? You know, do I get off the interstate now? Is the engine about to blow up? You know, how big of a deal is this? Nobody knows. Am I going to make it home? Am I going to be stranded out here at night? You know, how, how far will the car go? And then, then you start to realize, uh-oh, do I need a new car? Is the engine going to blow up? Like, how much is this going to cost? You know, am I going to have an expensive bill coming? And this whole thing's so overwhelming. Look, my check engine light came on a couple months ago. Took it, you know, I'm like, I don't know what to do. You know, it's all stress and it's on your mind. You're like, I got all these places to go. So you get it in the shop and then, I, then the shop calls. You know what it was? It was a loose gas cap. <laughs> I, I'm offended. I'm just going to tell you, can we please get a light on the dash for loose gas cap? That's not check engine. Like, why? Do, imagine if you had that for your life. You know, it'd be like, I got a hung toenail. Check heart. <laughs> you'd be having a heart attack. I mean, that's ridiculous. Please, y'all, automotive world, if you can hear me, please give us some more dash lights. Everything shouldn't be a check engine light. But here's one thing that I learned about the check engine light. The check engine light's not the problem. You can punch it, you know, you can tap it, like, please go off, please go off. But that doesn't really help because the check engine light's not the problem. The check engine light's just a signal. And see, anxiety's the same way. If you treat anxiety like the problem, you might miss the signal. And so anxiety is the, is the check engine light in your, in your life. It's one of them. And it tells you that something's going on and something's wrong, and you don't want to just try to resolve anxiety in a vacuum, but you want to try to deal with it and understand what's causing it, where's it coming from. But, uh, so if it happens in your car, what you do is you take it over to the shop, and here's why you take it to the shop, because you know the people over at the shop know the people that made the car, or at least they have the operation manual. And so they're going to look at the operation manual and go, why is the check engine light? What are all the reasons it can be on? They're going to figure it out. God has given you and I an operation manual. It's called the Bible. And inside it, and see, here's the thing. He's your creator, and he knows how you work. And he knows how you work best. And he's given us some great truths in the Bible to help us understand how we can live the best life that we can live. So, what does the Bible say about anxiety? Does the Bible say it's a sin? The Bible does not say it's a sin. I mean, can you imagine uh, uh, anything worse you can tell someone who's experiencing anxiety that they're wrong for feeling it? That's, I've heard people say that. That's terrible. Hey, anxiety's a sin. Don't worry about anything. That's a sin. What's well, not a sin? And here's how I know it's not a sin. Because when Jesus was preparing to go to the cross and die, the Bible says he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying with so much pressure and stress and intensity and, can I say it, anxiety that he sweat drops of blood. So if Jesus felt it, if Jesus didn't feel it, he doesn't know what we feel. If he did feel it, it's not a sin. So which way do you want it? It's not a sin. It's a signal. And so that's what, how we have to interpret it. So let's look back at Philippians 4, verse 6 again, and let's look at a different part of the verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer. See, that's what Jesus did before he went to the cross. Before, before the dark time came, before the bad hour came, before he, he was praying. So... If you're worried about a doctor's appointment, pray. If you're anxious about a decision that you've got to make, pray. 
if uh, you've got a, a family issue with a child or a teenager or a, a marriage issue you don't know how to resolve and it's just it's just sitting on you pray if you're carrying financial stress today pray let me say it to you like this if it's big enough to worry about it's big enough to pray about isn't that good if it's big enough to worry about it's big enough to pray about why is it we say oh no no that's not big enough but we'll just li literally lay there in bed at night and not go to sleep with our minds spinning over and over and we won't pray about it but but we think it's big enough to worry about it's obviously affecting us but somehow in our brain it that hasn't yet reached the category where you actually start to pray now um, we all have questions you know about prayer I think and I think there's one question that most of us have had at some point in our life or will have and that's just how how do you do it how do you pray you know what what what, what do you say are there prayer rules how do we talk to the creator of the universe do we use words you know is King James what you got to say do you use thee and thou Ah, oh, bless thee and thou you know is that is that really open heaven you know does that make something happen more than just how I talk every day I want you to know something there aren't prayer rules there's not this um, perfected format of prayer that you've got to learn before you do it okay you don't have to go through that so um, let me just give you some simple suggestions this morning since there are no rules let me just give you some thoughts about prayer uh, and how you can do it when anxiety strikes, okay? Number one, or I'm sorry, let's go back to Philippians 4 again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, I understand that this phrase, present your request to God, that's not really how we say things, you know, in modern times, present your request to God. It sounds all formal. Here's what it means. And, and this is the first thought share your needs with God just tell him talk to him say it how you say it you don't have to speak in King James and you don't have to talk church speak and you don't have to sound like me and you don't have to know theological words or anything like that just say it just say it the way that a child would talk to a loving parent who has no fear of rejection no fear of misunderstanding just say it now it might be intimidating to think about prayer especially if you haven't prayed in a long time or you don't pray much or maybe you're one of those people that you know something has to go down really bad before you pray and it might feel intimidating but I want to encourage you that it doesn't have to be intimidating because God always listens and he always hears and he knows your voice just like a mom knows the knows the cry or voice of her child God knows your cry he knows your voice and he'll understand even when you don't know the right words to say even if the words that you're saying aren't properly you know representing what you really mean he still understands because he knows you he knows who you are he knows you better than you know yourself and so just just say it to him just talk to him don't overcomplicate it write it or sing it or cry it or shout it or scream it or whisper it or say it in anger or say it however you want to say it a few uh, years ago I was in the middle of just a very long and painful season and and one disappointment had stacked on top of another on top of another on top of another and it was just overwhelming to me and um, I learned something in that season I, I I would go to God and I would just say you know God you know do this or do that or what and and I and I began to be angry with God because I, no matter what I prayed no matter what I said it didn't seem like that he ever responded or ever uh, answered or he certainly wasn't doing anything that I could see and so then I just started to go to him and complain and, you know where are you why are you doing anything why are you saying anything and, and and what it really came down to it was I was angry I was mad at God and so I just aired that out I'd go and pray and just air it out let me tell you one of the beautiful things I learned and I want you to hear this okay 
Let me tell you one of the beautiful things that I learned. Do you know what you call angry prayer? Prayer. And I didn't even know what I was doing, but I was still talking to him. And can I tell you, that makes a giant difference. It makes a giant difference in your life. Uh, Look, I I used to think that prayer was about finding answers, you know? Like, okay, I've got this, you know, dilemma. I don't know what to do. What do I do? I go pray, like one plus one equals two. I go and pray about it, and then I'll get the answer, and I'll know what to do, and then I'll go back go back to what I was doing. I used to think prayer was about finding the answer, or I have this decision I have to make. I don't know what to do. I go and pray. Now I know what to do. Now I'll go and do it. I used to think prayer was like transactional like that. Like, it's almost like a 30-minute TV show, you know? At the beginning of the uh, show, you get this big old dilemma, and then, you know, conveniently, after the last commercial break, it all wraps up. There, voila, it's all done. And so I used to think prayer was like that. I I don't think prayer is so much about the answer, getting the answers. I mean, you will get some answers, but you won't get all the answers. But I don't think prayer is so much about the answers. Let me tell you what I think prayer is about today. I think prayer is about um, you becoming the kind of person that is prepared to meet the challenges of your life in a way that glorifies God. And so prayer prepares you for that, even when you don't get the answers. So, so, so we mistakenly believe that if I have the answers, I'll have peace, right? I don't know what to do, now I know what to do, now I have peace. Peace doesn't come from a life with no trouble. Peace doesn't come from knowing all the answers. Peace comes from the presence of God. And where, whether you get the answer that you're looking for or not, one thing you'll always get is the presence of God. And the presence of God in the end is the only reliable source of peace on earth. Isn't that what the angel said at Christmas? Peace on earth. <laughs> Goodwill, right? So... Peace comes through knowing God's presence even when there are no answers on earth because there's some things there are no answers for on earth. So if your anxiety light is flashing, remember 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This word cast is very interesting. It means like um, throw. Throw. You know, you know, like you, you go throw a ball to release, to give away, to surrender. So throwing your anxiety, casting your anxiety onto God is so much better than holding it yourself, than keeping it and trying to figure it all out. And it's a very powerful thing. So that brings me to, to our last thought today, our last point, number two, surrender your anxiety to God. There's something called um, the cycle of, ang- uh, of anxiety, and there's two versions. Uh, one is oftentimes when we feel anxiety, or sometimes we feel anxiety, we want to escape. So what we do is we medicate it. We overeat or, or, or you know, we search out relief in pornography or uh, we, to alcohol or drugs or medicine or or whatever. We try to find some, we overdo something to medicate. And here's what happens. When we do that, it brings short-term relief and then greater long-term pain. And then we go back to greater anxiety and we start again. This is the cycle that an an addict of any kind goes through. It's anxiety, overdo something to Find relief, short-term relief, long-term pain. Now, there's another version of the um, cycle of anxiety that I don't think we think about enough, but I want, I want to put it on the screen because I want you to see it. It is when we feel anxious, we try to take control, right? We get stressed, so we reach in to grab hold of whatever is stressing us and fix it. But the more we try to control, the more then we fear losing control. So you see what's happening? 
I'm stressed, I'm anxious about something, I don't know what to do about it, so let me fix it. And then it, just as I grab it to fix it, my fear goes up and, and makes me say, oh no, what if I can't fix it? What if I lose control? And then the more we continue to control, the more anxious we become. And, and then we start over. Now anxiety's back up, we're back at the first step, and we loop through it again. And we reach to control. What, 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 is a, um, what do you think uh, makes an over-controlling parent an over-controlling parent? Anxiety. Right? And fear. I'm afraid that things aren't gonna go well, and so I reach in. And the harder I reach in, and the more I lock down, what do you think a workaholic's doing? The, the harder I drive, and the more I push, and the more I do, and the more I try to control, the more my fear goes up that I can't control, the more my anxiety gets higher, and I just start over, and I start over, and I start over. And so, what we have to learn to do is surrender. It's, it's not this that gives you a life of freedom, it's this. So uh, a few weeks ago, um, I, I just went through a really uh, overwhelming time. For those of you who, who don't know our story, my wife has a debilitating disease and she's in a nursing home and a few weeks ago she got COVID and um, that was very scary because she's already fragile. And she got COVID and, and everything was okay for a few days and then the symptoms really started to take hold of her and she was quarantined for 10 days. And about the seventh day of quarantine, um, our hospice nurse called me and said, hey, I, I think we're nearing the end of life and uh, I, I, don't, I don't think she's gonna be able to overcome this. And so, um, and I, I, there are 15 or 20 people in my life that I, that I told, but, the challenge was things were changing so fast, I couldn't even keep people updated because I give you an update, then the next time you see me, that's not even where we are anymore. And so it was overwhelming to me. It was just so overwhelming. And uh, one morning I got up, before I went over to see her, I, I got up and I went to pray. And in my mind, I was running all these, I was like, Lord, this is, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about, I, I got a son in Texas, I got my son here I got family in different places how are we gonna how are we gonna work all this out you know am I do am I should I be preparing for a funeral right now it just it was overwhelming to me and I remember uh, as I was praying I was saying you know God I, I don't even know what to pray do I pray that you take her home and re relieve her of the suffering that she's been in for all these years do I pray that you leave her here and that she has a purpose and I and I'm just I don't even know I don't even know what to pray I don't even know the right thing and so as I was walking through that I just said you know Lord I don't think I think I can pray a long time and I think I can think about it a long time and I don't think I can figure it out I don't think I'm ever gonna know and then what's the right time I don't know I don't know the right time so I just did this I just said you know what Lord I just give it to you I surrender it to you because I don't know. I don't know what's right. I don't know the right time. I don't know anything. And so I submit to you. This is really your, her life is in your hands. And, uh, and really probably it never should have been in mine anyway. And so I just give it to you. And I'm not saying that that prayer just fixed everything, you know? But it did bring a, a little more lightness to my soul that gave me the strength to move forward. And so, I, I just want you to know, as silly as this might sound, whether it's like a, you know, a bad haircut, or it's a, a tragedy, like the deepest, darkest tragedy that you can imagine in your own life. God's peace comes through his presence and his presence comes through prayer and what we have to do is we have to surrender those things to him but I noticed something about this whole process in my own life do you have a tendency when you give something to God to go to, to go get it and bring it back 
God, I give it all to you, you know, and then it's, your brain's just spinning, and you're all stressed. You're like, what happened? Oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, give it back. You take it again. You know what I learned? That's so okay. It really is. It's okay. God's grace on your life, if you have some kind of stress in your life where you just give it to him and you go, you keep picking it back up again. Let me tell you what I did learn, though. If you'll just surrender it back to him one more time, then you take it back. There it is. If you take it back 78 times, just surrender it to him 79. Just one, All it takes is just one more time. And so I, one of the most powerful prayers you and I can ever pray in our life is a prayer of surrender. Because here's what you need to know. It's exhausting to try to control everything. It's exhausting and it's draining to try to control things God never gave you control over. It'll just, it'll suck the life out of you and it'll break you down and it'll wear you out. After COVID, um, our, our staff here at our church, we learned a really beautiful prayer that I want to give you this morning. And I, let me share this one other thought with you before we go, because this was one of the great takeaways. You don't always have the power to control, but you do always have the power to surrender. Right? You're not going to control everything, trust me. But you can surrender everything. So stand with me this morning, and I want to give you this really simple, beautiful prayer, okay? That, um, that we learned to pray after COVID. And I want you to pray it with me. If, you, if you're watching online and you're not driving or something, I, I just want to invite you to stand up wherever you are too, just for a minute. You can, you can do this. I'm going to give you a prayer that will be such a powerful tool for you that will really help you with this whole idea of surrender, okay? It's so simple. The first time we say it, you'll probably memorize it. And I hope the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your mind again and again when your anxiety light goes off. And here it is. We're going to put it on the screen so you can see it. And I want you just to pray it out loud with me, okay? You ready? Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. Let's just let that sit for a minute. Would you pray it with me again? Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. Just take that in. Last time. Let's do it one more time, okay? Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. Wow. So good. If you're online and you need specific prayer, our prayer team is there. And through the rest of the service, they'll be ready to pray with you if you just put, uh, go to the comment section and tell them your need. As we sing this last song, here's what I will invite you to do. Maybe that prayer just resonates with you. And as we sing this song, it would be good for you just to whisper it a few times, Jesus, I give everything and everyone to you. But as we sing this last song, I just want to invite you to let your heart rest in his presence and let the presence of God fill you because that's where peace comes from, okay? Lord, I, I thank you today that you're a God of peace. And I thank you that although you don't remove all the trouble from the world, you give us peace in the middle of all the trouble in the world. And so I thank you for that today. And, and I believe that you have purposely designated these next few moments for some of us to meet you in a, in a special and a powerful way. And I just ask you to do that now in Jesus' name.